this season has been action packed for Red Bull. Plenty of overtakes, plenty of crashes and the occasional race win. But just how did all of that happen during the course of 2018? The only way to find out is in this video. Before we get onto the drivers, let's start with the team and how their car was over the course of the season. Now in pre-season testing, Red Bull were looking very good and looked a lot closer to Mercedes and Ferrari. And for sure they were going to be in contention for 2018. Just how much we didn't know. But after the first couple races in Australia and Bahrain, we knew they had a quick car. But they just were not getting the results. As in Australia, they finished in P4 and P6 and in Bahrain, both cars retired. There was definitely more to come from Red Bull. And they showed us what they could really do in China. As Daniel Ricciardo brilliantly won the 2018 Chinese Grand Prix. Now even though Red Bull were a bit lucky with the safety car coming out in the middle of that race. They still had to get the job done and they did. And their car was so quick in the final laps of that Grand Prix. But then in Baku it all went downhill. As both drivers in the race crashed into each other and they both retired. But we'll get onto that a bit later on. So far though the Red Bull car pace wise was looking quite good. And that continued into the European season. As after getting a podium finish in Spain they won the Monaco Grand Prix. Their first win at Monaco since 2012. And they had, without a doubt, the fastest car by a mile. Even though Ricardo in the race had an Urz issue, he still dominantly won that Grand Prix. It seemed as though that nobody could stop Red Bull that weekend. It wasn't a massive surprise though, as we know they can be very quick at street circuits. But still, very impressive. Then followed a couple more podium finishes in Canada and France. As at these races it was starting to be shown just how impressive the Red Bull's race pace was. As despite in qualifying qualifying quite far off the pace. And then on race day have one of the fastest if not the fastest car. It's a trait that Red Bull had all season long. And continued at their home race in Austria. Where Max Verstappen picked up his first win of 2018 and the team's first win at their home track. This was despite the car being miles off the pace in qualifying. But again, on race day they had such good pace and also very good tyre wear. But after this, in terms of pace, Red Bull were kind of quiet. They were miles off the pace in Silverstone in Germany and ended up without a podium. And then at Hungary, where you would expect them to do well, they ended up again without a podium. A disappointing end to the first half of the season as we headed into the summer break. And at the first race back, Red Bull got a podium at Spa. But this would spark a great second half of the season for Red Bull. As after this, they never really looked back. As in the first of the flyaways after the European season, they got podiums in Singapore and Japan. And were also very quick in Russia despite starting from the back of the grid. And then in the American races, they did have the fastest car. Where amazingly, Max Verstappen at the US Grand Prix finished in P2 after starting at the back of the grid. And then Red Bull, to be fair, dominated in Mexico. And also in Brazil, they had the fastest car. And were going to win that race for Max Verstappen until, well, you know what happened. And they ended 2018 with the fastest car on the grid. These are the stats behind their best hybrid season to date. They've had four race wins and two pole positions. With 13 podiums and 419 points. If only this team this season had a better power unit. Just imagine how quick they would have been. Hopefully Honda supply them that next season. But what were some of the team's worst races of 2018? One would have to be Bahrain where they did have a very good car but retired both of their cars in the first few laps. After Verstappen crashed into Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo has some kind of reliability problem. So disappointing when again they did have a fast car. Another one for me has to be Hungary, because normally again you would expect them to be so quick at that track, but only ended up with a staff in retiring and Daniel Ricciardo finishing in P4, after they had a disastrous qualifying. But their worst race for me is Baku, no real surprise there, as both drivers when crashing into each other cost the team 22 points. In the grand scheme of things it would not have meant anything, but still that is not good enough. And was a severely damaging day for the team. 
The less said about this, the better. But what were the best races? Well, Mexico has to be won, not only because they won the race, but because they had such a fast car. Mercedes and Ferrari could not even get close to them when it came to race pace. That is probably the most dominant they've been in 2018. Then of course you have Monaco, where again they were very, very quick and were never really going to be stopped. But for me, their best race of 2018 is Austria. Because basically they won their home race for the first time ever. And the chances of it going into that Grand Prix were so unlikely. As Max Verstappen was starting down in P4. And again in qualifying, he was nowhere near the pace. But the team on the Sunday produced a brilliant performance. As they tend to do a lot. But for me, this has been a good season for Red Bull. And if Honda can power them closer to Mercedes and Ferrari in 2019, then you will definitely have to watch out for them. Now let's get on to the drivers and first Daniel Ricciardo, who had a lot of bad luck in 2018 for sure. As after the first two races, he only picked up 12 points again really because of bad luck. Especially in Bahrain when he was looking so good but then produced another classic Daniel Ricciardo moment by winning at Shanghai. As after benefiting through the safety car coming out midway through the Grand Prix, he very well passed Lewis Hamilton, Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel, and then put an amazing move down the inside of Valtteri Bottas to take the lead and eventually the race win. Certainly one of his best wins to date. Then followed though that crash in Baku, where he was definitely not blameless. The start of the European season though saw a great moment. Him finally winning in Monaco after being so cruelly denied in 2016. And he thoroughly deserved it especially after the Urs issue he did have. Holding off Sebastian Vettel so well and still winning the Grand Prix quite comfortably. Another great Daniel Ricciardo moment. And in the couple races after he will continue in this great form. By finishing in P4 in Canada and France, despite also being a bit unfortunate at the French Grand Prix. But after the races in Austria and Silverstone, his season never recovered, as the best result he got out of these two races was P5 at Silverstone. And for the rest of 2018, he did not get back on the podium. He would though still have some good races like his P4 finish in Hungary, after starting in P12 on the grid after a horrible qualifying. But then after the summer break he retired from the Belgian and Italian Grand Prix. As his luck was only getting worse not better. He would though in Singapore, Russia and Japan finish all of those races. But the best he could manage was only P4 at Suzuka. But this was after more bad luck this time in qualifying. After having a power unit issue which forced him to start the race in P15. But then at Kota and Mexico bad luck in the races came back with more reliability problems that cost him most likely a podium in both of those races, but then had a good end to his Red Bull career with P4 in Brazil and Abu Dhabi. So not a bad end to his 2018, but it could have been a whole lot better if he was a bit more fortunate. And these are his stats from 2018. He had two race wins and two pole positions, with the two podiums being his two race victories and 170 points. Now his best races of 2018 are very obvious. It has to be China and Monaco. Not only because those performances were just so so good, but also because nothing else really stands out. So again his best races or moments has to be China and Monaco. But let's now get on to his bad luck. So let's go through all of them now. He retired from the race in Bahrain because of an energy store failure. Then his engine caught fire in practice 3 at Shanghai. He had an Urs issue in the race in Monaco. A front wing failure in France. Another reliability issue in the race at Austria. Another one in Germany. Then retired at Spa with a crash. Then had reliability issues at Monza, Russia, Suzuka, Kota and Mexico. That is a lot of races to be having reliability issues. Or having problems that are being caused by other drivers like the first lap crash at Spa. And that's why Daniel Ricciardo in 2018 has been just so unfortunate. He has had, out of all of the drivers, the most bad luck. And it just seemed at times to never end. 
And this is the amount of points, guys, I think his reliability issues cost him in 2018. 100. Yes, you are reading that right. 100. That is the amount of points I think he was cost through reliability issues. At one point, this guy literally could not catch a break. Just imagine if his car was more reliable. 2018 could have been a whole lot different. And hopefully with his move to Renault for 2019, he won't be put through the same torture once again. As the Renault power unit caused most of his problems. So hopefully it does not happen again. And now finally let's go on to Max Verstappen. Who had a very controversial and exciting 2018. And that controversy and excitement came at the very start of the season. As in the race in Australia he spun during the early laps. And ended up only finishing in P6. Then in Bahrain he crashed out in qualifying and then crashed into Lewis Hamilton only two laps into the race. And then he retired. China though was his first chance of a race win in 2018. But he completely blew it. When making key mistakes when trying to pass Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. And ended up finishing only down in P5. And then in Baku crashed with his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. The first four races results wise were so poor and it had to improve very soon. And it seemed as though it was going to after a podium for Verstappen at Spain. But then came Monaco where in practice three he had a massive crash at the swimming pool. Which meant he was not able to take part in qualifying and cost him a chance of a race win again. In what was a massive mistake. If Verstappen wanted his 2018 to be remembered for more positive things than negative, he had to put a stop to these errors right now. And that's exactly what he did, as he ended up getting impressive podiums in Canada and France, but then took his first win of 2018 at Austria, in a well-managed drive from Max. And it was clear now that Max had turned a corner, and he never really looked back. Then came though some not great results at Silverstone, Hockenheim and Hungary. But it was a lot more down to the car, not him. But then came back from the summer break well by getting a podium at Spa. And from this point forward he looked like a man on a mission. As he then went on to get podiums at Singapore and Suzuka. And pace wise was way ahead of his teammate. But then his final four races were fantastic. At the US Grand Prix he finished in P2 after again starting at the back of the grid. And then won dominantly in Mexico. And then he should have won in Brazil if it was not for Esteban Ocon. And he ended 2018 with a podium at Abu Dhabi. He was without a doubt one of the best drivers on the grid in the second half of the season. And was right up there with Lewis Hamilton. And these are the stats behind his 2018. He's had two race wins but no pole positions, but does take away 11 podiums and 249 points in what was mostly a good year for Max. And he did have plenty of good races. One was his dominant drive in Mexico. In that race, no one was getting near to him. His pace was just on another level. And he was the best driver by far at that weekend. Another great race was Austria. Now I'm not just saying this because he won the race, but again because of how well he managed those tyres, which on plenty of the cars were just falling apart, but he kept them in very, very good condition. And that's the key to why he won that Grand Prix. His best race though for me was Cota, after somehow coming very close to winning the Grand Prix despite starting at the back. If he started, say, in P4 or P5, he definitely would have won that race. I have no doubt about it. His pace was just so astonishing. And this is also one of the best drives in his entire career. But now let's get on to his crashes. And in the first six races, he had plenty of them. First off, of course, a spin in Australia. Even though I think that was caused by damage to his floor. But then in Bahrain he crashed in qualifying which was his mistake. And then crashed with Lewis Hamilton in the race which in my opinion still is a racing incident. As I don't think Max could have done anything to avoid it. In China though he was totally at fault. One for trying to overtake Lewis Hamilton around the outside which was very stupid. And was never realistically going to happen. And then of course spun Vettel round. 
in again a stupid incident, as the door when it comes to an overtake was never really open, and Max should have never have gone for it. And then there is the crash at Baku. Now even though I think Ricardo is partly to blame, Verstappen is mostly at fault for moving too many times in the braking zone. Something that you cannot do, as it is very dangerous especially after the end of a very long straight. And he does have history of doing this before. Think Raikkonen in 2016 at Hungary. Then crashed at Monaco in practice 3 which eliminated him effectively from qualifying. Just why did Max have to push so much? It was only practice, not the battle for pole position. So I don't know why Max was pushing that hard in practice. And I think he cost himself the win there. That was a big, big error. Then there's the incident in Italy with Valtteri Bottas, which got him a penalty and got him off the podium even though I think Verstappen was not at fault. And then you have the crash with Ocon in Brazil, and that did cost him the win. But again, I don't think Max was at fault. Ocon should not have been trying to unlap himself at that type of corner. It is as simple as that. But this is what all of that adds up to. I think all of his crashes, his mistake or not, cost him 61 points. That is a lot of points to be losing out on. And there's no doubt Max could have done better in 2018. I think if Max did not let the heat of the moment get to him, most of this wouldn't have happened. And he does have to think more. I do think he has been doing this, especially in the second half of the season. But it can be improved upon. These types of things though in a young driver are quite common. So it should just go away with age. And I do hope that is the case, because I want to see this guy maximise his potential. This guy, in my opinion, can be as good as Senna, Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton. And I just hope he does not blow this opportunity, because he just has so much talent. So hopefully has a consistently quick and clean 2019 in what will hopefully be a good car. But these two drivers face new challenges in 2019. One has to focus on developing the car to get closer to the top. And the other has to focus on developing a new and good relationship. One that could and hopefully be successful. But no matter what happens in 2019, hopefully these two drivers show us why they are the most exciting on the grid. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back tomorrow with another What If video. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of Red Bull, Ricardo and Max Verstappen's 2018. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.